Hey there. Let's talk a little bit about official Boy Scout of America knives and take a look at four examples. I have a very small but growing collection. You see it there on the table. Uh, but Boy Scout knives have been around for a very long time. I think the first one came out in 1911. That was just one year after the Boy Scouts of America was founded in 1910. And that was two years after a similar organization began in uh, Great Britain. And they offered a knife the very next year. It was a New York knife company or hammer brand number one. And it was a uh, four-bladed utility knife or a camp knife. And since then, the Boy Scouts of America have always offered that pattern along with others uh, as an official Boy Scout knife. Now, there have been others like fixed blade knives and whittlers and things like that. But uh, I like the utility knives or the camp knives because they're very similar to uh, Swiss Army knives. And they're very collectible. Um, they've been around, as I said, since 1911 and uh, have had 20 different manufacturers putting out 11 different patterns and 15 different colors. So you could collect them, you know, all day. You've had makers like New York Knife Company, Hammer Brand, the first one, Cotogaris, Western, Ulster, Imperial, Pal Blade, Remington, Schrade, uh, Buck, Kershaw, Camelus. They were the last to produce a U.S.-made Scout knife in 2007, and then they folded. Uh, since then, all of these have been produced in China. And I think that's kind of sad, but they'll just uh, be simply marked China. So, um, but uh, I guess that was a cost consideration, but a lot of those names I just read out to you are, are no longer in business. Um, they have uh, either moved overseas or succumbed. And so uh, to collect these, you're probably going to need some kind of a reference. I used to use scoutknives.net. It was a great online resource. But last time I went there, uh, it's defunct. So if anybody knows what happened to scoutknives.net, please let me know. So I had to get a book. There are two different books on the subject. This one, 600 Scout Knives by uh, Joseph Richard Kerr. And then there's another one, Official Scout Knives by Ed Holbrook. Both of these have been uh, out of print for quite a long time. But I was able to buy this on eBay. They're available for about $35, and they're brand new. Uh, I will just say this about this book while I have it. Uh, it's a great reference source. It's a very poor read. <laughs> it has few uh, black and white blurry pictures. Uh, it looks like it was typeset on old Smith Corona typewriter, just pasted together, kind of how like I would make a book. Um, but it is full of great information. And the way I use it, you're not going to read through this, obviously, but uh, if you have a knife you're trying to identify or, or one you just want to find out more information about, you can find it in here and get a lot of good information on it. So 600 Scout Knives by uh, Joseph Richard Kerr. Okay, before I look at these individual knives with you, let me just say that um, no official Boy Scout of America knife is going to say Scout or Boy Scout on the handle or the shield. There are a lot of other knives out there that are very similar. They say Scout, they're Scout knives, but they're not official Boy Scout of America knives. Uh, most Boy Scout of America knives will also have a blade etching that says something like, you know, official knife Boy Scouts of America, although not all of them had the etch. And uh, the etch was very um, weak and easy to rub off, so the older ones, you know, you're probably not going to find it. If you can find an older one with the etch fully intact, it's certainly going to be worth more to collectors than one without the etch. Okay, let's just take these one at a time. They're kind of arranged from oldest to, to youngest here. Uh, this first one is a Remington, and it's model R3333. You can see it's uh, got brown bone handles. This knife is a pre-World War II knife. Uh, this knife was made from 1935 to 1939. Uh, Remington sold to Powell Blade Company in 1940. So you're not going to find an old Remington that uh, is any older than 1940. Um, this one is a four blade model. It's three and three quarters inches long. It has a permanently attached bail with three lines at the bottom of the bail there, a little detail work. It has a round official shield with the motto, Be Prepared. Other ways to identify this specific model is there are no lines on the bolsters. Uh, this brass separator here on the back has a little uh, detail work on it. And let's just take a look at it. It's also going to have a very long uh, screwdriver cap lifter with no bump. Some of them kind of had a bump back here. It has a two-piece can opener with a horizontal pull, so there's no cutout here in the scale to lift it. Some of them, uh, other models, will be marked Remington on the back here. This one does not have that. There is a long puncher awl. Typical kind of Boy Scout punch, kind of dull at the end with a sharpened edge. 
Uh, this also will say on this model Remington in a circle there. And then the blade, uh, usually these are spear point blades. They're usually going to be carbon steel, so they're going to be very uh, dirty, usually patinaed or corroded, uh, a lot of times rust and stains. Um, I chose to shine this one up. Uh, some collectors like to have the patina, but it's my knife, and uh, I think a well-polished blade actually resists future corrosion better. And uh, if anybody wants this to have a patina in the future, they can just let it re-patina. Uh, here's your tang stamp. Uh, it reads, in the circle, Remington in block letters, UMC, and I think UMC was United Munitions Company, and then above, Made In and below, USA. Some of these will, uh, other models will have a Remington in script. Sometimes they don't have the UMC. And then on the back of this one, you can find the um, model number R3333. There's also a very similar model RS3333. Uh, this one, if it had an etch, uh, you know, it's long gone. But the blade is actually fairly full, and that's good. And then the action on this knife is really good. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This one is an Imperial, and uh, this is sometimes referred to as the Deluxe model. It's a little shorter knife. It's three and a half inches, and it never has a bail. Now, you can see it has this simulated rosewood. You can also get this with simulated uh, jig brown bone and white bone or ivory and faux pearl. Now, this is a five-bladed model, and you can see here there's a cutout for uh, inline Phillips. This is a little two-part tool. It's been pinned and welded together and oftentimes these are missing. This knife just specifically is in really good shape too. It's really my favorite pattern so far. And it's really pocketable. Uh, I love the tool combination and it's it's really a great little knife. And this one's smooth and it's got good action and everything's nice and tight. Uh, here's a federal first class shield on this one. Also we'll have the motto be prepared. Then on this one you have a safety can opener at the top, a smaller screwdriver cap lifter on the same end, and then back here with your uh, Phillips driver you have a, another awl, and then this blade. This blade has a partial etch that I talked about. If we can get this in here and look very carefully, you might be able to see the uh, remnants of the word knife there. So this blade was etched at one time, but like I said, they wear off really easily. Tank stamp on this one um, reads Imperial, Prov, Providence, USA. Nothing on the other side. This knife was made from um, 1953 to 1962. And the next one is also an Imperial. We're back to three and three quarters and four blades. This knife was made from 1958 to 1962. Uh, it has a permanently attached bail. Most of these will have brass liners, nickel silver bolsters. This one also has the safety can opener up here in the front. The screwdriver cap lifter is across from it. And then the awl. and then the spear point blade. And uh, this one again, it's got a pretty good full blade. Uh, I've never seen one of these where you could see the etching. So I'm not sure this model actually came with a blade etching, but perhaps it did and this one's just been worn off. But the tank stamp on this one's just slightly different. It says uh, Imperial, Providence, and then they got the uh, Rhode Island in there, Prov, RI, and then USA to the side. Now these are Delrin shields. This is kind of referred to as the carved shield. This is unique to this model. Uh, these are Delrin and some come brown and some come reddish like this. So I guess that's the first class symbol again and you've got be prepared. And then finally we have an Ulster and again three and three quarter inches uh, four blade model. It should have a permanently attached bail, but this one's missing, so I'll need to get that repaired. Here we just have a little round tenderfoot shield. But what's unique to this one is this uh, sawed bone or um, stag bone handle. And um, also the tools are stainless steel. 
Now this knife was made from 1966 to 1976, so it's a little unusual to get one with stainless steel tools. Um, so it's a little heavier, the tools are bigger and heavier, and this was often referred to as the Scoutmaster model, probably for those reasons. So let's just take a look at it. And uh, here again, safety can opener, it's big, and uh, it's stamped can opener. This one's a little stiff, talk about that in a minute. Uh, but here's a very long screw, screwdriver cap lifter. The awl, it's really about the same size as the others. Uh, and then the blade, spear point blade. Now this one has the etch attached, so let's take a look at that. So it's official knife, Boy Scouts of America, stainless steel. And uh, this one reads Ulster, let's get it in here and focus, Ulster, stainless, New York, USA. Uh, this knife, uh, all the tools are cranked to kind of sit in there real tight, and there are no separators, so you just have this big open carriage. And because of that, I don't know if it's this particular model or this particular knife, sometimes when you open more than one tool, they can get in conflict with one another when you close. Or you can open another one, uh, one and another one will move over a little bit and make it hard to shut. So that's uh, not that great of a build, but I guess you're really just supposed to have one thing open at a time. So that's been a look at four... Uh, official Boy Scout of America knives, my small and growing collection. Uh, if you'd like to see uh, another video on camp knives and utility knives in general, check out Knife Chats with Tobias. He's got a great video on that pattern, a lot of good information. So go check out that video. I'll put the link in the description box be below. Go check out his channel. He's got a lot of good information. And he really knows his knives. Uh, so hey, support your YouTube creators you know, by, by uh, giving thumbs up to the videos that you like and by subscribing to the channels that you watch. Um, you know, this may look easy. Uh, for me, it's not. It takes quite a bit of effort. And most of us don't make any money doing this. We just uh, love what we, our hobby, we have a passion for a hobby, and we just want to share with you what we're doing. So uh, let us know you're out there. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.